In the last video, we established a telescoping inequality, and we were able to show from this that um, the term which we see here on the right hand side is non negative um, under some circumstances on, for sufficiently um, uh, short step length to be precise. And so the norm of y n minus y bar is decreasing. And here we constructed y n by taking this to be the argument to the proximal point, and y bar would be like the desired limit value um, if x bar is uh, some minimizer of f plus g. So this is what we expect y n to converge to. Okay, so this is where we stand, and now the uh, the final step towards uh, showing the convergence of the, of the sequence xn to a minimizer of f plus g will be uh, to also exploit the right-hand side of the telescoping inequality. And we do this by taking some capital N greater or equal than 1 and sum up um, the inequality So this one here um, for n from 0 to capital N minus 1. Okay, so what do we get? So as I advertised, the, the, these um, terms here go out because it can, we, we, we basically take y0 minus y bar minus y1 minus y bar plus y1 minus y bar and so on. And you see that everything, uh, every, all the terms cancel out except for the first one which is uh, the norm of y0 minus y bar squared and the very last one which is attained for n plus 1 equals n. So this is y capital N minus y bar squared. Okay. Now on the right hand side we have a lot of positive terms and we just sum up them. So sum from n equals 0 to capital N minus 1 norm of yn minus xn plus 1 plus gamma gradient of f at x bar squared plus 2 gamma sum Um, f of x n plus 1 plus g of x n plus 1 minus f of x bar minus g of x bar minus 1 over 2L um, gradient of f n of x n plus 1 minus gradient f of, f of x bar squared uh, Reach the end plus gamma two over L minus gamma sum from zero to capital N minus one of gradient of F X N plus one minus gradient F X bar norm squared and this holds um for all capital N greater or equal than 1. Okay, so now we can um, continue this estimation to the left and we see that this term here is non, um, well the norm is non-negative so minus the norm uh, will be non-positive so this is less or equal than just the norm of y0 minus y bar squared. And now we see that this does not depend on, on capital N, depend on capital N. Okay, so this means that this upper bound for, for this sum here is independent of capital N. So this means that the whatever positive terms, all these terms here are, which we sum up are positive, we sum, the, sum, the total sum will always be less or equal than 
uh, this uh, specific real number. And this means that um, the so um, so that the sums on the right hand side are bounded by the term on the left hand side. Okay? So this means that the sum, well, I can start here, sum, so if we just take the limit of capital N to infinity, so we get the sum to infinity of this norm of yn minus xn plus 1 plus gamma gradient of f x bar squared. This is less than plus infinity. And whenever this coefficient here is um, strictly positive, so if it's zero, then we obviously, obviously the whole term is zero. So it, this is not of no use for us. But if, if the, if uh, gamma is strictly less than 2 over L, then this sum will be, um, will be less than plus infinity as well. So um, we have sum from n, n from 0 to infinity, norm of gradient of f of x n plus 1 minus gradient of f of x bar is less than plus infinity if gamma is strictly less than 2 over L. So this is the last assumption we have to make. We have already made the assumption that uh, the inequality may be uh, satisfied with equality, but now we, we see why we, why we want to have the strict inequality. So gamma is strictly less than 2 over L. Okay, so this is important. Um, so this ha happens, and since gamma is strictly greater than zero, as we assumed, then we know that the sum of, um, of f of xn plus 1 plus gxn plus 1 minus f of x bar minus g of x bar minus 1 over 2L gradient of f at xn plus 1 minus gradient of f at x bar norm squared is also less than plus infinity. Okay, so now we have seen that all these terms are summable. What does this mean? Well, the summons converge to zero. Um, that's the classical result. So this uh, this allows us to conclude that, um, so let's start here, gradient of f of xn plus 1 minus, yeah, minus gradient of f at x bar converges to 0, or as we can also write, this gradient here converges to gradient of f at x bar. Um, okay, then we have uh, no gradient this time, sorry. Um, let's start with yn minus xn plus 1, yeah, okay, plus gamma gradient of f at x bar. So this converges to uh, 0. Um, same argument, this, uh, the, this is, these, the, the series is summable, so um, all the terms in the series converge to zero. And we also have that f of xn plus 1 plus g of xn plus 1 minus f of x bar minus g of x bar um, minus 1 over 2L gradient f of xn plus 1 minus gradient of f of x bar squared also converges to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, so this is our uh, result or our 
basically our conclusion from this telescoping inequality. All right, so now let's um, see um, what else we can, uh, we can say. So, um, um, first of all, um, we know that um, this sequence here is, um, is decreasing. So this means that the sequence uh, yn, the distance to the point y bar, is decreasing. This means that the sequence yn must be bounded. Okay? So the sequence yn, oh, that's an ugly yn, better, uh, is bounded. What does this mean? Well, uh, we have that yn, um, yeah, I mean, we can, uh, what we want to come to is that also the sequence which we use as arguments to the function is bounded. Um, this is the more interesting sequence here, because this will eventually converge to um, some minimizer. Okay, so uh, we can, we can write this in terms of um, xn plus 1. So what does this mean? We have xn plus 1 equals, now we take just the, the yn and we subtract uh, yn minus xn plus 1 plus gamma gradient of f of fx bar. Now we still have some something, so we have yn minus yn, great. We have xn plus 1, great. We have minus uh, gamma gradient of f at, at x bar, so we have to add this. Okay. Uh -huh. So this goes to 0, and this does not depend on n, is also bounded. So the sequence x n plus 1 with n uh, as the index is bounded. Okay, so now this means that we can take a subsequence, um, so which is convergence, because as we remember, every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So take um, a convergent subsequence. And now we take x and k plus 1, where the plus 1 refers to n k. So it's not n k plus 1, it's n k plus 1. Okay. Um, with k um, of uh, so k greater or equal than 0 of x n plus 1. Okay. And uh, we, we uh, since this is convergent, we just name the limit of this x hat. And this is an h as k goes to infinity. Okay, so this converges to x hat. And what we now want to show is that x hat is a minimizer of um, f plus g. Okay, let's do this. And uh, to this end, uh, we will use um, this relation here, and um, we will uh, use the um, the lower semi-continuity of f and g. We remember uh, the lower semi-continuity of of f. Uh, comes from the continuity of f, which is in turn implied by the differentiability of f. So this is clear, it's even much, much stronger of a property. And g is lower semi-continuous because we explicitly uh, required that. And here we see why we required that. Okay, so then um, we want to calculate the function value of f plus g at x hat. Okay, 
So lower sem semi-continuity means that this is less or equal than the lim soup of f of x and k plus 1, okay, because x and k plus 1 converges to x bar, okay, and it's actually not the lim soup, it's the, it's even the, the lim inf, uh, okay, so lim inf. Okay, and this means that we can just take the the limit here, which we which we already know, and uh, since f of x n k plus one is a subsequence of x n plus one, um, we know that of course the limit here uh, will transfer to this. So we know that the limit exists. So limit. Uh, k to infinity, and now we can take, well, f of x n k plus 1 um, plus g x n k plus 1 minus f of x bar minus g of x bar minus 1 over 2L gradient of f at x n k plus one, of course we all still have to take the sub, or we still take the subsequence here, uh, minus gradient of f at x bar squared. Uh, we have to draw our borders here. Okay, so this is this. Now we have made an error, of course, um, but uh, we can correct this by saying, well, what we have added is this term here. Okay, and what we have, sub or what we have subtracted is this term, so we have to add it again, and we have to sub subtracted the f of x bar and g of x bar, okay? And now we see that this is zero, so this here is zero, the limit, because that's exactly this statement. And we also know that this is zero because that's the this statement here. Of course, this only holds if gamma is less than two over L. So, oops, sorry. So this is. Um, uh, what we what we have to require. So this is f x bar plus g of x bar. So we know we see that um, the the function value at the x hat is less or equal than the function value at the minimizer. So we see that x hat is a minimizer of f plus g. This is a great result. So now we can actually uh, go all the way back and use x hat here in place of x bar because we just assume that x hat, uh, because that x bar is just some arbitrary minimizer. Now we have found some concrete minimizer here, namely x hat. Okay, so we can now just um, insert x hat instead of um, instead of uh, x bar. So let now y hat be um, x hat minus gamma gradient of f at x hat. Okay. Um, by the way, this this also means we have we have shown that for any minimizer. Uh, the gradient of f at x n plus 1 converges to uh, the gradient of f at x bar. So for any minimizer, our sequence of gradients converges to the uh, gradient at the minimizer. So this means that gradient of f 
um, is so the gradient of f is the same for all the minimizers because for all the minimizers our sequence converges against it because yeah we have shown that so um, this shows that um, the the gradient of f is constant on the set of minimizers of f plus g okay um, now um, what we want to use is that we know that this sequence is decreasing so there exists um, the limit of n to infinity and now we can use y n minus y hat squared and we, we want to show that this limit is uh, zero okay okay Let's let's see what we can do. So um, actually, we we only have a statement of convergence of x n k plus one to x hat. So x hat is a is a limit defined as a limit of x x n k plus one. So obviously, we have to somehow replace this y n here. Um, we can do this uh, with the help of this convergence relation. So this will be the limit of so y n minus x n plus one plus gamma gradient of f at x hat. Okay, this is this statement here. This is also this is as you remember true whenever we have any minimizer x bar, and here we we choose x hat. Okay, great. So now we have made an error. So we, we have to add x n plus 1 because we just uh, invented this. And we, had, we have to subtract um, gamma gradient of f at x hat. Okay, so now we see that uh, this converges to 0. Um, of course, I forgot something. Sorry, I forgot minus x hat uh, minus y hat. Okay. Uh, yep, but uh, now this is correct. So this goes to zero. Okay. So we have the limit of um, well x n plus one um, minus y hat and I just substitute y hat as um, x hat and since we have minus we, we have to add plus gamma gradient of f, of f at x hat and we have to subtract this term okay so we get this so this is just this term where we inserted the definition of y hat Okay, now we are done basically. So this is the limit of x n plus one minus x hat. Okay, and it's the same limit as uh, the norm of y n minus y hat, by the way. Okay, so uh, we see that the limit is unchanged and we know a priori of its existence, so that's good. If we go to a subsequence, so we set we, we take x n k plus one. Okay, this has the same limit because taking a subsequence of, con of of the convergence sequence does not change the limit. Okay, and here we know since x n k um, goes by definition to x hat. Uh, here, uh, we know that this is zero. Okay, and now the last uh, equality here uh, shows that um, x n plus one converges to yeah x hat, and this is nothing else than saying well the sequence of shifted index indices converges. Um, so this means xn converges to x hat 
uh, as n goes to well an infinity so the sequence well just make make, make it explicit x n n greater or equal to uh, than zero um, converges to a minimizer of f plus g this one as long as zero less than gamma less than and the limit was two over l so the upper bound okay so this is what we need these are the the assumptions convex differentiable Lipschitz gradient uh, for f proper low a proper convex lower semi-continuous for g we have some arbitrary starting point we choose gamma in this range and take our iteration like this and of course we have to assume the existence of a minimizer and then we get the um, we, we get the convergence to one particular minimizer of the sequence xn.